Hey there, this is Straight Talk, No Sugar Added. I am your host, Nina Perez, and we are here to discuss life topics to challenge and transform your thinking. Let's do this. I am stoked because I have somebody here who I've been following and reading his book and looking at his website and listening to his podcast. I'm in there. I'm a fan. So his name is Jeff Lopes, and he is a proud father of two, a husband, a serial entrepreneur, right? So he's founded many companies, including True Blue Homes, which are vacation rental properties across um, the north part of Ontario, Canada, and Kimura Wear, a boxing and martial arts equipment brand. And he is the top rated entrepreneurial podcast for Jeff Knows Inc. And his most and uh, amazing best-selling book, Entrepreneur Dad. I am reading it. I'm sorry, Jeff. I'm reading it. Um, <laughs> and it's the seven keys to a successful business and a happy family life. So Jeff, thank you so much for taking the time. I know it's it's a weekend and I really, really appreciate you being here. How are you? I, I'm doing amazing. And I, I want to first off tell your audience, I appreciate you. I appreciate you adding this platform. And thank you. these platforms are important because they, they spread the word and they allow individuals like ourselves that are entrepreneurs or, or, or people that are looking to get the entrepreneurial space, information, education, and inspiration. So I, I appreciate it. And thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thank you. I wanted you to, if you can, I know I gave a little bio, but can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? I'd like our audience to always like get to know you a little better. Yeah, I, I've, I've been an entrepreneur. I'm 44. I've been an entrepreneur for little past 25 years already. So the time flies. Um, yeah, sure you, you, you realize as you get older and you get to this, I, I think is almost once I started passing my 40s, how you appreciate and how you look and value time so much so more. True. So, so true. 25 years have, have gone by, um, like our all entrepreneurs, we've gone up, so we've had downs. Mm -hmm. I, I always look at the column where we have more wins than losses, so we're on a good side. And um, I found it, I'm usually the the, the guy that builds things and exits. I don't like wow. holding up to things very long when it comes to business. So I get bored. I, I need change. I need different environments. But for some, yeah, for some reason, Kamora where um, I started it in January 20th, 2006. So do we just pass our 15th anniversary year's wow. anniversary? And for some reason I've kept this company and, and it's a, a we design, we manufacture boxing, martial arts equipment, something I'm kind of passionate about. I've been always involved in martial arts partaking as a participant for years and years and the company has allowed me freedom to do so many other ventures and some of those ventures like we talked about prior that you talked about is true blue homes where we have a portfolio of commercial vacation rentals right across ontario and we're in the process of building out a 16 acre cabin resort in a beautiful place called muskoka so it's allowed me to build all these different ventures and 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 allowed me to just grow as an entrepreneur. So 15 years later, we're still doing that. And once the pandemic hit in March, mm. it was a different, it was a different mindset because all of a sudden now my two main companies, Kamora Wear, which we wholesale to gyms, all the gyms had closed. Right. So it was just a shocker, right? So I had to had to really pivot really quickly and go more to B2C and go direct to consumer. I actually, instead of scaling back, I actually started flooding more money into the business marketing wise to get to a different level. And then when it came to True Blue Homes, uh, the government shut down STAs, which is short-term accommodation. So all of a sudden we, were, we weren't allowed to rent. So once again, I had to find a loophole. So I found a loophole in the system where if people were misplaced from their homes, I was still allowed to rent for them. Oh, so sorry. we found different little loopholes and we kept the businesses both flowing, but I had a little bit more time. And for the last three years, I've been coaching entrepreneurs. I've never charged a penny. I've taken 64 entrepreneurs under my wings and it's been more of just a, a joy just it, and, and a learning experience because I always knew coaching would be later on in my life. I didn't think it would be now. And it allowed me to gain this experience and knowledge and working with different individuals, different personalities, different levels of entrepreneurs. And I've grown some of them up to seven, eight figures. And through this whole process, I was like, now's the time to do this. So I really, last March, I said, okay, in order for me to be a successful coach, as, as silly as it sounds, you have to brand yourself. Because mm -hmm. if nobody knows who you are, you ain't going to get right. clients. So I took to social media to start branding myself. So I really, really focused on branding myself. And I really focused on building so my social media out. I really focused on a podcast, which we, mm -hmm. we've just recorded our 100th episode, which is pretty amazing. And since last March, and, and I thought I'm going to use my podcast as 
a networking. I use my podcast as a branding platform. And then I took pen to paper. I wrote my first book to add some, yeah. some kind of expertise to it. And at the same time, too, I thought if I'm really going to dive into coaching, um, I want to get certified, even though it really doesn't mean nothing in the coaching world. Right. Um, but I said, you know what, let me just add some little letters to my name. And I really went to a, a higher level um, international certification. I got certified as NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. I got yeah. certified as a life coach. And, and then I built this whole backend platform for entrepreneurial dads called The Man's Purpose. And, and the whole purpose of building this platform, and I was actually talking to somebody about this this morning, was there's so many coaching businesses out there. Yeah. And they charge thousands and thousands of dollars. And a lot of them, I'm going to be honest, I, I don't think are qualified coaches. Mm -hmm. And they've never really built nothing themselves. They've really never experienced life. So I said, I want to create a platform and I want to really like change the whole outlook of how coaching is done. And I created this platform where it's literally, it's less than a dollar. It's literally, literally less than a, a coffee a day. It's 47 mm -hmm. bucks a month. And, and we, we have group live coaching sessions once a week with myself. Oh, great. Uh, we hold you accountable, accountable with an on-track accountability program once a week. So it's just all this stuff. And it's for 47 bucks a month. So we package it really at affordable rate. So that's me in a nutshell. So I'm a coach, author, podcast host, <laughs> a serial entrepreneur. And, and, the, and the thing I'm most proud of, and the thing I put at the top of my, 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 my almost my platform is, is proud dad. I'm a proud dad yeah. of a few amazing kids. Yeah, I, I, I was reading, uh, like, I can't put your book down, by the way, very well done, very well done. Um, I'm reading your book, and I'm crying at some parts, and I'm jotting at some others, and I'm taking quotes and putting them out there. It's like, you're really full of knowledge, right? And I, I was very inspired by you. And even like in your very first business, I think you were saying it in an interview or something, how it, I think you were like security guard or something, or you had guys wearing jackets and being security guards. And I'm like, how did he think of that? Right. Yeah. So it's almost like, I wonder if, if um, entrepreneurs like you who've been, uh, have you been entrepreneur always, or did you yeah, work for never, never, never worked, ever worked I mean, for I mean, anyone? You got to realize when I was 16, 17 stock boys, stuff like that. But I first started my a real company, which you're talking about there at 17 wow. and I ran that for about a year and a half till my parents were screaming at me because I was working too many hours with it. I ended up selling that company until this day, the gentleman wow. that bought that company still runs the company. It's called Strictly Security Services. Wow. And, and so that was my first <laughs> touch in it. Then I started college and I was taking fitness in college and I realized very quickly that I had to continue my entrepreneurial journey. I was just, I was 19 and I started a consulting company, a fitness consulting company, personal training company at that time at 19. And that's when it all kind of started from there on. Wow. I just feel like there's something that some people are born with, right? I think that, I, I mean, yes, you can be, I think you can be trained and definitely coached and definitely um, uh, given a different mindset, right? To do things, but you also have to have that, that tenacity and grit. Right. Um, I don't know if I don't know if everybody's born to be an entrepreneur. What do you think of that? You know, that's a that's like the million dollar question. It's, yeah, it's right? something <laughs> a lot of people debate about, and it's a lot of people question and and ask. And it's something where my mindset on that, and everybody's different. My mindset on that is exactly what you said. You could coach somebody, you could give mm -hmm. somebody all the tools, you could give somebody all the knowledge, but at the end of the day. They have to sacrifice. They have to be the ones that are going to sacrifice themselves yeah. to get to that point. They're the ones that have to hustle to get to that point. There's mm -hmm. the ones that have to wake up every day when that business is not getting the way they want or not growing at the speed they want. They're going to still keep doing it because they're looking right. at the end goal. And that is the biggest thing is, is most people quit. Why do most podcasts never last more than like five episodes on Apple iTunes? Right. Right. This the way it is. People have this great idea. They have this thing, but once they realize how much work is involved, yeah, they quit. And 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 that is the biggest area of failure for most people because they just don't have the drive and the hustle. Like yeah. I I call it the three to seven, and I'm very passionate when I tell everybody this. This I'm home from three to seven every day. Uh, Monday to Friday, three to seven, I'm guaranteed home. And I call that family time. And I block that intentionally into my schedule. And that schedule time is already in my schedule months in advance, three to seven. Everybody that knows me knows my phone's off. Don't bother me three to seven. Right. But I'm a super busy entrepreneur. Right. And those three hours, they're valuable to me. Right. So right. I realized that for me to sacrifice myself to be home three to seven, to be with my family, 
I have to find another sacrifice to, to, to balance that out. So I'm up every day at 4.30. And I don't like getting up at 4.30. Anybody that tells you they like getting up at 4.30 is full of crap. I'm up at 4.30 because I realize if I sacrifice myself in the morning, it'll allow me to, to be home at, in the evening and spend the time wow. with my kids. And be, I mean, I, I put this in my book and I, and I, and I always tell, there's just that out there as a parent, 90% of the face time we get with our kids is before the age of 18. And if you're aware right. of that stat, and if you do yeah. want to be an impactful parent and be a parent that's going to really, really change and build memories and, and build special times for your kids, you, you have a very short window. Like I, I look at my really kids do. and they're 12 and 14. I'm like, where's the time gone? So right. it's, it's very important to be intentional with your time. Mm -hmm. um, schedule is, is, is without me focusing and studying my schedule, there's no way I would be able to do all the things I do. So I intentionally block things into my schedule and, and I, and I know this time is blocked for this. If I go even over five minutes, I'm done with that. I'll figure it out tomorrow. So I intentionally focus on my schedule, study my schedule and make sure I work on blocks on my schedules. Everything is balanced perfectly on my schedule. Yeah. You were talking a lot about priorities and putting your priorities in order. And I was like, oh, where was this book like 10 years ago for me? <laughs> my kids are, are now adults, right? Um, I'm yeah. a little older than you, but I had my, my kids very early and um, they're adults. And now I'm more intentional. Like they call me every day. I have two boys. So they call me every day. They, they want to talk to me about their life and what's going on. And I literally stop everything I'm doing to make sure that I'm there for them because it doesn't matter what age they are, right? Um, but, but when I'm reading your book, I realize that there's a lot that can be um, pulled out of your, your hustle and your book and the way you put things, because you're right. I mean, I don't think there's anything more valuable in your life than what you're doing right now with that special time that you have. That's the time you see them grow. You can be there. Like, I love the story you put in the book about the Netflix, right? The Netflix wasn't working. So you were like, I was so tired, but I got up anyway to fix her Netflix or her, her, um, so she can watch Netflix. There was something that wasn't no, working yeah, her Wi Fi yeah, or something. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, how many times have I said, I'm too tired. I'll do it tomorrow. You know? And I'm like, ah, <laughs> you know, but I am so uh, proud of you. And I'm proud of the way you wrote this book because you, you wrote it honestly, like you're just one of us, you know, like you're just a uh, uh, dad, what? you're, huh? What but that's who I am, right? That's yeah, I'm, right. I'm I try to be as authentic, and that's the the biggest negative thing. There's so many positives with social media, mm -hmm. but the biggest negative thing is people not being authentic. Right. I and agree. every single post I do, every single thing I do, I make sure it's authentic. If I don't feel it's authentic, I won't post it. I won't show it. I'm and saying. and that's because you could call somebody's, you could smell somebody's crap very quickly. <laughs> So I, say that all the time. <laughs> I think it's very important to be authentic. And something I want to bring back what you were saying there is, is I call it living without regret. Mm. And I think this is a, a, such an important lesson for everybody. And this is something I've learned not, not that long ago, just probably a couple of years ago, maybe even less, is I always hear people say this. And, I, and it's a thing that is like a pet peeve that just bothers me when all of a sudden somebody's dad dies and they're like, I wish I spent, I wish I had more time with him. I wish I had more on one day. And I know that guy and I know he never called his dad. He never would go visit his dad. Right. And I'm like, seriously, you're saying this now? Right. I go, right. I tell everybody is do not live with regret. So I'll give you an example. Like mm. my dad will call me up and say, oh, Jeff, I need help with this. Or Jeff, can you come do this, this? Or can you come see me for this? And in my head, in the past, I'd be like, yeah, dad, I'll come see you on the weekend. I'll come to it on the weekend. Now, I will literally get in my car, stop everything, go do what he had, go see my dad or go take care of that. Because I do not want to, and I, because I value the time and I value right. how age is creeping up, I don't want that moment where I get in my car and something happens to one of my parents or something happens to a loved one. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, I could have just went there to see him one more time. I do not live your life as if today is the last day. That's the easiest way to explain it. Do yeah. not have regrets. You got something to do, do it. You want to start a business, do it. You got to spend time with your family, so do it. If so you good. live today as if it might be the last day of your life, and if everybody were to live like that, 
How many more successful people do we have in this world? How many more happier people do we have in this world? How many less regret do we have in this world? Yeah. So I think that's the biggest lesson is try to live, and it's hard sometimes, but just sacrifice yourself because that extra little sacrifice is going to mean the world because mm-hmm. there's going to be that one day when you're going to look back and like, oh, I'm so happy I did that. Yeah. And that'll oh, change so every true. sacrifice. So true. Such good knowledge. I was talking to an elderly lady. She was like in her 90s or late 80s. And I said to her, what is the one thing you regret in your life? And she said, the one thing I regret more than anything is not living my life for me and always living how everybody wanted me to live or what they expected of me. So I never did what I wanted to do. And I'm like, I won't do that. I'm not going to no. do, okay, I'm going to take that advice and, and that's not what I'm going to do, you know? So I, I I agree with you like a thousand percent. And I love that you're also instilling that in your children, right? 100%. I mean, I was reading the story um, of your son. Is it Tiago? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was reading the story about Tiago and, and, you know, you in the hospital with your wife and how you guys were there all the time. And I'm just like, you are so invested, right? You're so invested because um, I love the part of the story where you were saying that you realized that other parents weren't showing up. But even though that was a hard moment, you showed up, your wife showed up, right? That, that takes- You know what's crazy is, I, 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 to me, that's just natural. Like- right. <laughs> Why would you not show up? And, and to give right. a little backstory to that for, for your audience, um, my, son, my son spent the first four months of his life at Sick Kids Hospital when he was born. We almost lost him and my wife when, they were, when he was born. And, and for that four-month period, we almost lost him four to five times. And he was diagnosed with CP, uh, several palsy in that, in, that, in that time frame. And I mean, there's a happy ending to that. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you guys in a second. But when we were at the Sick Kids Hospital, we were on the fourth floor, and we we're very blessed in Toronto. We are one of the greatest, I think it's the top, second best children's hospital in the world, rated wise. And awesome. we're on this fourth floor where the ICU, where it was the most intense room. So there's six beds in there, and it was a rotating, and as sad as I'm saying, it was a rotating bed. Every couple of days, a baby oh, would come wow. away. And I would be there from morning to night, sitting next to my son's bed with my wife. And we wouldn't say nothing to each other. We just sit there and just, 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 just spend time with him there because we didn't know how much time we had left with him because we, we, we were constantly being pulled into a room saying, "Hey, things are not working. Do you want us? Do you want us to pull the cord?" And and we kept saying, "No, let's keep going. Let's keep fighting." And one day, um, one thing we we noticed was we would never see other parents there. The other time a parent would come in, sit by the bed for a couple minutes and leave, or come in for an appointment with the docs and then leave. And I looked at the nurse and I'm like. Like her name was Marianne. She was so great with my, with my son. And I said, Marianne, like, what, where are all the parents? Like, do they come when we leave? Do they come on the, like, what is happening? So we're there seven days a week. And she says, a lot of parents are so terrified of building a bond or a connection with their child, knowing they're going to lose their child, that they refuse to do that. And they don't show up. They only show up when they have to show up here. And I stood there and I, I was bawling. I'm like, how can you do that? You might only have a month. You might only have a week. You might have only yeah. a day to spend time with them. Why wouldn't you cherish that time? Right. And, and, and she looked at me and she actually said, she goes, you know, the, the difference is your son's going to make it out of here. I, I feel like every time I talk about it, I feel like crying. Like she goes, your I know. son's going to make it out of here. I cried for you. <laughs> goes, your son's going to make it out of here because you guys are here with him. And he knows you're here with him. And my son, when we finally got out of the, out of the hospital, um, he was only four and a half pounds. He was four months old, four and wow. a half pounds. Um, the doctors didn't want to release him to his five pounds. Um, I, we kind of forced, we said, listen, we need to be parents. We need to take a moment at this point. So we, we proved that we could take care of him. They put us in that room on the sixth floor for three days, no doctors. Um, at that point, he was still on feeding tubes. So he, wouldn't, he wasn't even swallowing yet. So we had to bring a baby home, four and a half pounds, four months old, didn't know how to swallow. So we had to teach him how to swallow. Wow. Take care of them. We were just, and this is our second child and the first child birth where everything was perfect. So it was just like, what are we going to do? And I remember when we came home that day, the next morning, I looked at my wife and said, the only thing I don't want to happen here is I do not want to wake up when I'm six years old and be like, I didn't give my son every single resource, mm-hmm. every single opportunity to, to get, not be confined to a wheelchair, not to give him every opportunity to live. And, and that was when our journey started. And from that moment on, the next day it was all about therapy, stretching, um, working out. We did everything and we took everything oh, as a huge wow. win. So when he was a year and a half old and he was finally able to stand up and balance, huge win for us. Oh that my was gosh, for real. And then and then we ended up getting him to slowly start moving and walking and therapy and whatnot. 
And I used to spend hours a day on my hands and knees at a rec center by our house, just walking back and forth with him. And finally, we were able to prove that he could move and walk. We, we convinced the doctors to put him on AFOs, which is a braces. And we were told he'd be in braces up to his knees till he was about 19. Fast forward with working out. He's my workout partner. We work out five days a week. If you go to my social Jeez. media, see your pictures. <laughs> and fast forward prior to his 12th birthday, he's out of his braces. And he's getting ready to run his first marathon this summer. So oh my gosh. It's, it's, it's been this incredible journey. And it's been a journey where, like, I don't even think he realizes, he's still too young to realize how much he inspires me or how much he's taught me. He's, yeah. he's taught me way more than I've ever taught him. And, and it's been this incredible journey. So that's, that's a nutshell of where a lot of the whole story was. And, and be honest, that's where even where my company, True Blue's Home, started. Because I didn't know the future of my son. Right. And I didn't know what was going to happen with him. And that being said, um, I was running this ex successful eight-figure company, Kamora, where, but at the same time, if something were to happen to me, I was still doing the day-to-day -day operations. I was still mm -hmm. the face of the company. If something were to happen to me, that company would fall apart in three, four months. Right. Right. So in my head, I needed something more sustainable. So like that, let's, let me get properties that are bringing a steady income through rent. And if something were to happen to me today, my kids would be taken care of. And that's when the whole real estate started. And I started just literally, it, it's been to the point where like for the last nine years, every year I buy a property and I've been buying and just that's use so them as, as, as passive income. Right. So that's me in a nutshell, but going back to that, yeah, that part of the book, it was, um, is, 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 is I couldn't understand how parents would, that's essentially going back to living with regret because yeah. every single parent there, I guarantee there's going to be a moment in their life. They're going to look at themselves in the mirror and oh, be yeah. like, I regret not spending every second I had with my, my child. A hundred percent. You know, um, I, I love the way you run your business too. Uh, I know I've heard you say this a few times where you run it as a team, not a family, which is really smart. And um, there was also something, oh, where you said, uh, in order for my business to be sustainable, I fired myself from a lot of different positions. So you hired other, so smart. And I'm like, oh man, <laughs> when I started my business, I had a, a kid's cooking business. I used to go to people's homes and cook with kids and all that kind of stuff. And it was great, but I did everything, right? And yeah. so I got burnt out by like five or six years. I'm like, I'm done. You know, yeah. so yeah. Um, then I got a, a nine to five, which is where I am right now. But I, I know that in me, I am an entrepreneur at heart. Like I, I have to be doing something. I have to work and do something like I have to create, I have to, you know, all that kind of stuff. So reading your book just kind of like inspires me, you know, yeah. and it's, it's a real, it's really well done. I mean, go ahead. Can I say something? Sure. We live in the digital age. You love cooking for children. Why wouldn't you create a platform for that? Oh, There's a um, need for that. There's a I need for that. Yeah, well, I guess there is. I mean, I think it's because I love it, but I love this more. Yeah, you know? but there's like, nothing wrong with, I'm, I'm, having, I'm a strong believer. More? I'm a strong believer in having as many passive incomes yeah, yeah. and as many sources of income as possible. Because when the yeah. pandemic hit, the people that relied on one income, that their oh, business yeah. was affected, are all struggled. And there's a lot You're of them right. know, didn't know how to pivot. So having different forms of passive, it, it's something we'll talk online. I'd be more than happy to sit down and give you some guidance, but um, having different forms of passive income as an entrepreneur is so valuable. So, yeah, so, that's so good. valuable. That's good. You just put a little bug in my head and that's good. <laughs> Cause you know what it is. I come from a little bit of a different background, right? My, I always, my, we were always taught or I should say we weren't really taught anything about money, right? But I always grew up saying, well, I don't want to live off of the system. I don't want to be somebody who lives off of the welfare system. So I had my son very young. I was 15 when I had my son. Oh, and wow. I was like, okay, I'm entering high school, 15 years old, and I'm a mom, right? Yeah. What am I going to do? So I worked two jobs, finished high school, did what I had to do to take care of my child, right? But I wasn't going to be on welfare and collecting and get, you know, that's just, it's not in me. I'm just not that person, you know? So I grew up differently. So I've had a lot of struggles and being that way, uh, as I'm reading your book, I'm like, okay, it's time to like, let go of like things that happen, things in the past, things that are holding you back. And Hey, you're not promised tomorrow. So today is here do it today, you know, and tomorrow will come whether I want it to or not. I don't know if I'll be here or not for tomorrow, but it's coming. 
So yeah. what am I going to do to make it count? And I, I was reading your book and a lot of that was like really resonating with me. And I'm like, I know I was telling my husband, I said, I know that this is entrepreneur dad and I'm getting actually a few copies of your book because I'm going to give them to a few men in, in my life. I'm like, but I should just erase this really quick and just put an entrepreneur person because... <laughs> It is so good. You were speaking to, you know, you, I I don't know if, you know, you ever went out with the intention of reaching, you know, women or, or other, um, I mean, entrepreneur and parenting is, 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 is universal, right? I mean, I like anything when you're starting a business, it's very easy to over expand your audience and then, and then Mm -hmm. want to pull from so many spots. And you, if you don't have an exact target audience, it's yeah. very hard to yeah. grow a business. So my mindset was, um, I studied parenting and fatherhood for 12 years. Um, I, I've been an entrepreneur for 25 years. So it was me like, let me stick to a lane in and in a, in a direct market that I'm comfortable with, that I know mm-hmm. that it will respond. But reality is, exactly what you said, anything that comes to entrepreneurial parenting is, 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 is global, right? It's not right. something that we have to think. So a lot of the message in the book work for any sex so it doesn't matter who it is right yeah i want to dive into one thing you said there i think is so important is not thinking of your past living in the moment Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we all have to live in the moment yeah the minute we focus on the past the past is behind us it's already past you can't change it right Right. the minute we understand that we can change our past and the past is behind us all you do is keep moving forward right you learn from the past you understand right. the past, you might spend a, a minute or two or a day to reflect on what has happened and learn from it. But don't right. dwell on the past. You can't change it. Just learn from it and move on. Right. That's all it is. Right. Because a lot of people focus on the past. And I think that is That's that true. is one of the biggest things with I, I, another thing with social media is a lot of people focus on the past with social media and social media embraces and awards the victim. So somebody loses a job Mm -hmm. and what happens? They post it on social media. I lost my job and all these people are, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So now Mm -hmm. they're living Mm -hmm. off that moment and they're going to live off that moment because now they're rewarded by their friends and their loved ones for that moment. But if I, if somebody puts a post, puts a post, Hey, I started my own business. They'll get get two likes. They'll get two likes. Oh, good job. And then everybody like, Oh, they're going to fail. They're going to fail. So it's, right. <laughs> it's, it's constantly people get rewarded in our society for living in the past and being victims. So, so true. live in the moment, focus on what you could change now and just right. keep moving forward. Who cares about the past? It's gone. Right. You can't do nothing about it. Just learn from it. So if there's something bad happens, just make sure you don't do that again. That's all it right. is. Yeah. So true. Right. I mean, when you even think about just your story that you shared with us a little bit with on Tiago, right. Yep. If you would have t- taken that as at a victim mentality, he wouldn't have been where he is today, you know, because you would have been a victim and then you would have been sorry for him and he would have been a victim, you know, and in when you do that, you just stop yourself from the growth. You know, your son is going to go run a marathon for goodness yeah. sakes. Right. But if they didn't, if you didn't have that mindset of I'm going to do whatever I have to do to inspire and push my child to know that he can be better than where he is right now, then he would have been stuck there. Right. And I think that that happens to us as we're growing up. If we have parents that don't inspire us and don't push us forward, it takes us a little longer to get there, you know, but once you start to work it, and that's why I think um, your book spoke so much to me because yeah, you're an entrepreneur and a very successful one, but you're also extremely good at teaching um like you said you took some parenting you took parenting you said right you were yeah, i I, stu- yeah. I didn't take parenting you courses studied. i literally read i i would call it indirect mentoring i just wrote read books and read books and, and, yeah. and videos and youtubes and i just tried to learn as many different tools that i could apply into to my day-to-day life yeah that was because you cared it was. about it you cared about it yeah and that's amazing and um you know i think it wouldn't, it would like really speak to everyone if they would just do that, right? Even if you just read 
one book to show you the value of your child and the value of what they mean. See, dads to me are always very special. I, I didn't have a father really. So um, to me, you know, my husband's a great father. So I'm like, I, I look at all that. I look at how he encourages and how he loves his kids. I mean, they're all adults, but you know, he's, he's there for them. You know, if they need something, he's on a plane flying out to do whatever he has to do. And I'm like, you know, fathers make their daughters feel like they're worth it you know, and they make their sons inspire to be better. Right. Yeah. So I know I love mothers because I'm a mom, but yeah. I just, there's something about a dad. There's just something about a dad, you know? Yeah. I mean, the moms, the moms always the, I mean, and just in, in general, how we view parenting. I mean, mm-hmm. usually the mom's a nurturing, loving one. Mm-hmm. The father is the, the educator, the teacher, right? So that's just the way, I mean, the roles have changed so drastically in the last decade of parenting, but in general, that is what our history shows us, right? So as a dad, you're trying to put your children in, in, a, in a situation when they are learning and developing and growing, and you're trying to put them in, in, in the right frame that they're not going to make the mistakes that you made. Right. And I think that's very, very important, right? So is that why you decided to do the, the your your business or your podcast, I should say, as an entrepreneur dad? Like you're really so, trying so, to reach yeah, into No, fathers. so my yeah. podcast, yeah, my podcast is, is entrepreneur period. It's not entrepreneurial dad. Oh, okay. I thought it yeah, was, I thought yeah. it was just focused on men. Okay. No, no, just entrepreneurs okay. in general. So it's just entrepreneurs in general. The, the, the man's purpose and the coaching business and all that is, is essentially entrepreneurial. Oh, dad. It's separate. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's totally, got totally, it. totally, totally, totally separate thing. Okay. And it's, it's, it's just, I just love having conversations with entrepreneurs. Like we're doing right now. Like I, I, yeah. I just, I enjoy having conversations with entrepreneurs. I think that's so, so special. Right. Yeah. 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 And you do a great job by the way, in your podcast, because I actually thought they were connected because when you have these conversations with your guests, it's so intimate, right? And a lot of them are sharing like really vulnerable things that have yeah. that they're going through in in your podcast. And I'm like, wow, this, you are a master. I don't know how you, <laughs> I don't know how you just said you just started podcasting. That is BS. You've been doing this for centuries. <laughs> how do you like it? You know by what? the way, it's are you enjoying having, it? <laughs> it's, it's enjoying having conversations, right? Yeah, and, and, exactly. And, and as you evolve, and as you, if you. I always say this, if you have a passion for something, mm-hmm. you're going to do well at it. You're, that's that's, that's the golden that's ticket for a business, an entrepreneur, is find something that you have a passion for. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of people will turn to a business and say, uh, I'm going to have to, I'm going to find a need or a want in the market, which mm-hmm. is extremely important to make a business be successful. But if you don't have right. passion for it, if you can't wake up every day and be excited to do it. It's going to fail over the long haul. No, yeah. it's not. You have to be able to wake up and be like Monday. It's not, oh, it's Monday. It's it's Monday. Let's go. We're starting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to have that excitement. You have to have that joy. And the minute you, and that is why as, as a serial entrepreneur, um, I've always been in a situation where in the past I'd build and sell, build and exit because I would build something really quickly. And then the minute I would lose a little passion for it, I'd be like, okay, boom, next, let's start again. So oh, more would have been that's one of the, the so it, that way you're constantly feeling driven to do something, right? So you're right. constantly set to set new priorities, new goals, new stuff. So having that passion is so valid when you want to actually build something properly. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to be letting you go soon, although I don't want to. Um, I have a question. 100%. How do you, how do you uh, mentor or coach um uh, anybody, a man, woman, doesn't matter. But how do you coach an entrepreneur that is um, passionate about something, but fearful and maybe um, struggling with the financial part of it? Like how do, how do you kind of help them understand that they should be following that passion? Okay. There's, I mean, there's so many layers to that, right? So right. fear, I'm going to break fear into something. If you got a couple minutes, I'm going to break fear into something totally yeah, different. Course. So mm-hmm. fear is something that a lot of parents could actually intake with this is, and I put this in my book and I, and I, something I'm very passionate about is fear is not something we're born with. We have to first understand that. Yeah. Fear is something that we were taught as children. And, and you always hear it with your mom, like, don't touch the oven. You're going to bring it. Don't run down the stairs. You're going to fall. That's something that's instilled in us. And as we get into school, it, you see another kid being able, being fearful to do public speaking. You get scared. It's you start building these fears by your Mm. environment. And that's something for parents to actually understand. And from young age, if you could break that fear 
and put mm-hmm. your children in uncomfortable situations where when they break through, they succeed and they're rewarded for succeeding, That's that good. fear stops breaking from a young age. So when they get to it, they become teens and they become, I'll give you an example. My, and I think, I don't even know if I put this in the book or not, but did I put, I, I can't remember. I, I, um, but there's, a, there's uh, my daughter came to me a couple of years ago and um, she had to do a public speaker in front of her school, in front of her class. And she was so scared to do this speech. And I was like, okay, what, what fears? And she goes, I, I'm, I'm so worried of how my peers are going to react. And she was in grade seven at that time. And, and I said to her, see, I go, okay, we're going to practice this. We're going to study it. We're going to learn it. And every night I would make her do her public speaking in front of, in front of me and my wife and her speech. And, and when she got it down, practice it, you're, you're ready. And I built all, I spent about a week and a half building her confidence up. So she went, she did it. She, 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 one first in her class so she now was able to present in front of the school so now the next fear so we broke that fear she presented her school she won she now she's represent her school to the board she went to the board she won the board now she's going to the province so at 1750 kids she finished third and that was from four weeks before she was shivering thinking she had to talk in front of a group of 20 kids right so it's all about breaking those fears. Now so this kid good. will talk, this kid will talk, and my, my fortune will talk in front of 100, 200 people like nothing now. So right. it's breaking those fears. So I think the first thing is, is understanding and making the entrepreneur realize that no one, in the end of the day, if they succeed or don't see, it's not going to change anybody else's life. Right. It's just their own. So they got to focus on themselves That's and true. break the fear. Break right. the fear. That's the first thing. Second thing, when it comes to finances, um, there's different levels of finances, right? If you're right. working full time and you have children, you have stuff, you're not going to quit. I would never tell somebody to quit their job to start a business when right. they have other responsibilities. So now that comes to what I talked about sacrifice. You really right. want to be an entrepreneur? You know, you have to put food on the table for your kids. You got to pay, you got to keep the electricity on. That's, that's, that's responsibilities that you right. have to maintain. So now guess what? You're going to be working from nine to 11 every night, or you're going to be up at four right. thirty every morning. Finding the sacrifices and finding ways to make those sacrifices work towards a business. So first is breaking the fear. Second is finding, finding what areas of your life you're going to sacrifice to get so there. Good. Yeah. And then when it comes to financing, it's also sacrifices. How much money you're spending on junk? How much money are you spending on coffee? How, what can you cut out of your life to right. save an extra amount of money. So now I could build a website or I could do this. So figuring out, looking at your finances and figuring practical. out where, yeah, be practical. I mean, you could start a business on a bootstrap budget. Like you could start a business yeah. and be successful because we live in an age where digital social media gives you a platform where you could do a little video and go viral. And within minutes, you have this big audience. It's so being good. creative. Yep learning how to sacrifice your time, learning what things in your life you can sacrifice out that you don't need. And just living in the moment, not being fearful or caring or giving. I I always tell people, don't give a shit what people think about you. The minute you could focus on yourself and not care what everybody else is going to think of you, you're going to succeed. Yeah. There's a freedom to that. Yeah. There's, I mean, when it comes to business, I mean, I could get into practical. I could say, you gotta do this, this, you gotta brand this, you gotta figure out your colors, your pantones, your feelings, your mission, mission statement. That none of that matters. What matters first is, are you willing to sacrifice yourself? Are you willing to sacrifice taking things out of your life that shouldn't be there? Are you willing to, are you willing to put yourself as another great one? Surround yourself around people that want to be who you want to be. Yeah, I always I always like to say too that I always want to be in the room with people who are smarter than me and doing better always. than me. Always. I always like I I that's why I love this conversation, right? Because you are a lot uh you inspire me a lot to keep hustling and keep moving forward to to be the best version of myself, right? Yeah. Um and so before I let you go, can you just tell us how we can find you because first of all, your program I can't, I can't believe it's even that low in price. I didn't realize that. That's pretty freaking awesome. Yeah. Um, but it's it's full of like, um, you know, I mean, I like I said, I follow your podcast and I read your your material because I really do believe in what you're saying. I mean, it's re- it's it's good stuff. And I like that you don't sugarcoat things. You kind of just say it how it is, you know, and I like that. I mean, I mean, the show is called Straight Talk, No Sugar <laughs> Added, right? <laughs> so of course I like that. But um, 
give us your website and um, how we can find you on out there in the social media world. Yeah, social media world. Like I'm on all the platforms, but I mean, I pretty much stick to IG, uh, uh, Instagram. You can catch me at oh, okay. Jeff, Jeff Lopes, J-F-F-L-O-P-S. That's primarily where I focus on because the plot, the social media world, you get very lost very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I, I primarily focus on that. And um, if you're a dad out there, an entrepreneur in, in like, I can't stress this enough. Like you're going to get more coaching than any one-on-one program. Yeah. And, and I'm yeah. putting it at the point where I just, I, I want to help millions of dads over the next few years. I want to get great. dads into financial freedom. I want to get that. I want to teach dads how to value their time and, and value wealth as freedom. I want to teach you how to build memories with your family. I want to teach you all the tools I've learned over the last 12, 14 years. That's and, good. and, and I put it at, at a platform, like I said, it's, it's, it's at 47 bucks a month. Like you, it's, I wanted it. So nobody would ever it wouldn't be a stress on you financially because right. right. you know how it is in the coaching world. You can spend thousands and thousands yeah. of dollars and they sit with you in a room and they're going to give you hocus pocus about this, right. all this life coaching stuff. I'm very practical. You come to me and I'll be like, Jeff, I need to build a website. Okay. Let's do this, this, this. If I can't help you, I'm, I am so networked. I'll make sure I pass you yeah. to somebody that can help you on the spot. And, and that's all it is. Like I had a young gentleman reach out to me the other day and uh, he, he's got an incredible story. He wants to write a book. Um, and, uh, couldn't, he's, he's actually in, in, I don't even want to give detail on it, but he went to a couple publicists and they wanted to hire a ghostwriter. They were charging a dollar, $52 a word. It would have been about $40,000 oh. to, to write this book. And, and he came to me and he's like, Jeff, I need your help. Um, what should I do? Should I hire this? I literally within a day and a half got all my contacts. I found a, uh, a, a copywriter or a writer that just finished school that was looking to build his name, connecting them both now that he's getting his book written for free. So it's, there's so many ways and it's, and people don't understand the points of networking. And that's, and that's another part of my program is I force you every single week to network with three individuals in your field. That's and great. I also force you to network two other people together. I think that's another thing that's very important is if, if I can network you to another entrepreneur, and you guys become best friends and start a business together. Who's your anchoring point? It's always right. me. Right. So this, the, the networking aspect of business is so crucial. And I think a lot of people don't take the time to do that. So that's one part of the course also. So we hold you accountable weekly. I, I, I make sure you network. I network for you. And I help build, whether it's business, family, I help build what has, has to be so built. Good. And it's all for 47 bucks a month. I don't mean, it's not even the money. It's, it's about helping as many people as we possibly can. Oh, that's and so and, and to get there, it's called Jeff, jeffreylopes.com, J-F-F-R-E-Y-L-O-P-E-S.com. Jeff, you are the bomb. Honestly. I appreciate this. And I appreciate <laughs> This is so fun. I'm glad Thank you me. came on. I'm really glad you took the time. I know you're in Canada and you have, you're in your home and stuff instead of your office. And I totally appreciate you taking the time to talk to me because, you know, you're someone, uh, since you booked the date on the calendar, I have been waiting for this day. <laughs> I'm like, I, have Jeff. I was upstairs dancing. My, my son is like, what's wrong? I said, I'm interviewing Jeff Lopes. He's like, oh, the book. Yes, the book. <laughs> so thank you guys. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate your time. You have just listened to another great episode on Straight Talk, No Sugar Added. Don't forget to subscribe so you can get more amazing content. Also visit our website and YouTube channel. Until next time with more great episodes coming your way.